What's going on everyone? Today I want to talk about the first official public build along that I'm going to be hosting. I did one of these last September roughly and I had 13 people join me and it went extremely well but I learned some things and now I have got a package put together that I'm ready to put out there for people to join. Matt from Skill Builders Guild and myself plan on attending the We RC Rock Nationals out in Colorado this June. And that event is based around competition tube chassis vehicles. Now, competition meaning realistic tube style builds. And that's some of my favorite things. Now, like we did last year for Rocky Mountain Regionals, we built matching vehicles with the Porsches. This year, we decided we should build a couple of matching moon buggy. And the start of that you see here in front of you. This is my test chassis for the build along. I used all of the pieces that I'm going to explain to you today to put together this chassis here. And what we're gonna to discuss today is how I think that many of you could build one just like it with as much help as I can possibly give you. Now, fabrication, isn't for everyone. Some people just have no interest in it or maybe just physically have no ability to have or store, use the tools that it would require to do this. And I totally understand. But for those of you that do have the desire to fabricate or maybe you're already fabricating and you're just looking for another project, then I think that this one could be a great either start or just another one to be a fun build. For those of you that aren't interested in building along, but you still want to follow in depth as we go, I've got some information on that at the very end of the video. Fabrication is one of the most rewarding things, and it's a super powerful tool to have in your toolbox. Being able to design things in a computer is great, but if you can't make them come to life, and when sometimes a 3D printer just won't cut it, then having some fabrication skills will go a long way. And to help you out, whether you're brand new and just don't really know where to start, or you're a seasoned fabricator and you just don't wanna do all of the tedious stuff that goes into designing a full chassis, I've put about 40 hours of design work into this package that I'm going to detail out for you today. So what we're going to get into is we're going to cover the tools that you'll need, the supplies, and what I'm going to provide in the package. This is the basis of a single seat moon buggy chassis as they're commonly referred to in the full size world. And this one is modeled after a new buggy that was built by Jimmy's 4x4, also out of Colorado. I saw this on Instagram a handful of weeks ago and I thought it looked great. And I was pretty interested in designing a new moon buggy for myself. I thought it looked great. I thought it had some additional styling cues that you don't typically see on moon buggies that I was excited to be able to integrate into the project that I was looking to do. Now, this buggy is built around a 1.9 platform with roughly 4.75 inch tall tires. The wheelbase is gonna be just a little bit over 13 inches ideally, and it's gonna be based around Vanquish F10 portal axles. Now you could build it with four wheel steer or two wheel steer depending on what you're really after. For the transmission, I'll be basing mine around a VFD twin that's reconfigured a little bit, and we'll get into more details on that later. But I also think that you could easily run a deluxe portal transmission or a standard three gear style transmission in here without much problem. And again, we'll get into some of those details in a little bit. That is a lot of the 3D printed fixturing like you see here. Now, I built this chassis and all of these pieces that I'm showing you already. So there is going to be some that's got some signs of melting and things like that, but that's fine. These are single use to me because I'm, well, I'm building two, but I'll reprint anything that I need for mine. The purpose of the design is to do this in stages. This is the first stage fixture. Once you have your tubes done, you put them in this and you tack them into place. Now to make it easier to figure out if your tubes are done correctly, I've got jigs for everything. The bottom tube here, what would be along the rocker panel, there's a jig just for that. And this allows you to cut this to the exact length that you need. You just put your tube in there, cut it to length and you know that's all you had to do. And you set it in the jig and you're set. For tubes that have a bend, there's a template for that as well. It's concave so you can actually fit it in there to make sure that it matches the bend radius and the overall length 
as is required. Once you get the bend done and cut to length, then you will need to notch the tubing to make sure that it fits down into the fixtures properly. But the fixtures really help tell you that you're in the right spot. If it doesn't sit down all the way, you need to take a little bit more material off and you just kind of get there. It just helps take all of the guesswork out of fabricating, which can be a ton of time. And it also helps you get a really square tube chassis built. Now, every tube in this chassis has a template, so you'll know exactly how long you need to cut every single tube. You'll put all of your tubes in the jig and there's holes in these all over and that's for zip ties. So you can zip tie everything down. Also helps in case you're just a little bit further off than you thought, put a little tension on a zip tie, pull things down into place. Once you get down with the first stage, you're done with those templates and you can put them to the side. From there, you go to the next stage. In this case, you'd have the center section. These are all done in multiple pieces so that you can put your tubing in there, get it all into place, finish the entire stage out, and then deconstruct it and pull it out of the chassis from the inside. Just makes it easier so that you're not having to physically break away the jig as you go. Sometimes, even for me, it gets a little hot and it melts to a tube a little bit. You just kind of pry it off. Again, single use is the idea for these. As part of the package, you'll also get files for things like the hood that I've done here, the interior for the configuration that I plan to do, file for the skid plate design, as well as the shift servo mounts that will have to get integrated as well. Distribution of all the files is done through a website called Discord. Many of you may be familiar with it, many of you may not be, but it's basically the ability for us to have a private forum where we can post the files, share details back and forth, share photos, all kinds of things to really just help along in case you have any struggles along the way or share your progress with the rest of the group. As I progress through my own build and Matt's, I guess, I'll be creating files that I'll be using to kind of detail mine out like a scale interior, probably some sort of scale engine for the back. And those are files that I expect to share as well. Then there's other things like the idea that I have for my reconfigured VFD twin is going to require like a custom machined top shaft. Now, if I am able to execute that, then I'll make that available to any of you so that you can pick that up as well. Ideally, to do this the way that I've designed it, you're going to be using a TIG welder. Now, TIG welders can be had for two to 300 bucks these days that will probably get the job done. I started with a very inexpensive TIG welder and I got a lot done with it. Mine now was about 750 bucks, so it depends on where you want to be. You can spend as much as a used car on one if you really wanted. Now, if you had some sort of wire feed welder, you could likely tack it into place in the jigs, then remove it from the jigs and braise it. That would probably also be a way that you could get some decent results. I don't normally like MIG welded chassis, but this is a way that I think you could use these to get through and still get a pretty clean result if you cleaned up those welds. You'll also need a 3D printer. Most 3D printers should be capable of doing what we're using here. All of the jigs that I'm printing here are just standard PLA, run of the mill hatch box PLA. While you could use a more heat resistant filament to possibly avoid some melting, I don't know that it would really make that big of a difference. So the ease of PLA, how inexpensive the filament is and how easy it is to print, probably be the way that I still suggest you going. You'll also need some sort of tube bender. I've had this one for many years. It was produced by a company called Oaken Shield Productions, and I believe that they've changed their name now. If I can find a link to it, I'll put it below. I had to attach it to my own block of some sort to hold it in my vise, and I had to make my own handle for it. So something to think about there. The other one was sent to me not too long ago, and this one's available on Etsy. Uh, I also had to make my own handle for that. If you end up picking this one up, I'll give you the file for it. But both of these are well suited for DOM tubing, and that's what I recommend for this process. These both have about a half inch radius, and that's the important part because that's what I designed my fixtures around. So if you're looking at any other benders, just check that it's got a radius that's close to half inch. Beyond that, you'll also need a way to cut the tubing, a hacksaw, a Dremel, a cutoff wheel, a bandsaw, Lots of options will work from that. And then you'll need a way to notch the tubing. And that's the way that you sand the joints so that they kind of fit over and you know wrap around the edges of the tube. Now there's a ton of ways to get that done. Chainsaw files are an easy way or a common way to do it by hand, or you can use a Dremel or a very 
ridiculous over-engineered Nacho Libre. There's a bunch of ways to get notching done fairly effectively, especially with DOM tubing. It's pretty easy to work with. Lastly, I'll also suggest that you have an M3 and an M2.5 tap. The laser cut files have holes in them that I intended to be tapped. So you'll just tap those by hand with an inexpensive tap and tap handle. DOM tubing is what I suggest. I've said that a handful of times and I'll link to the place that I buy that. I personally buy mine from Stock Car Steel. They used to have it listed in a different way and a lot of people thought it went away completely, but it's actually just like recategorized on their website. For this chassis, I think I used about 13 feet. I buy them in three foot sticks and I just buy like 20 feet, somewhere close to that just to be safe and just have more for down the road, pay shipping once and then you can build some other stuff later. You'll of course need the PLA for your 3D printer. And if you're TIG welding, I suggest using silicon bronze filler. That's what I use for each of the joints on this. Now that is technically considered TIG brazing rather than TIG welding. The difference between brazing and welding is just the temperature range. Technically soldering is anything under 800 degrees, anything over 800 degrees and below the molten point of your base metal is considered brazing. The filler material, silicon bronze, melts at like 1700 degrees Fahrenheit versus 2700 or so for the actual steel. So that allows you to just kind of flow and it almost feels more like soldering if you're used to doing you know regular electrical soldering than it does to welding. It's a little bit more forgiving. It's still plenty strong. And for this stuff, it's highly recommended. I'll put a link to where you can pick that up as well. It's way cheaper than if you're used to like silver solder brazing with a torch. And lastly, you're gonna need the laser cut parts. And I get those all from Send Cut Send. So I'll give you a link and all you'll do is click the link. It'll take you to Send Cut Send. All of the parts are already loaded and you just check out from there. It's a direct sale to send, cut, send. There's no middleman. I don't get a cut of it or anything like that. It's just click buy from them. And the parts for this chassis with everything done, I think it's around 50 bucks. As you can see, I've already built the tube portion of this tube chassis, but there's still a lot left to this build. And it's called a build along because you're going to be building alongside me. I've already done this part of this one, but I'm going to be starting on my own when you all start, which means that I haven't completed a full one yet. So there is a chance that we run into hurdles. I've done my best, I think, to engineer my way through this project ahead of time using the you know knowledge of past projects, things that I've learned, new tricks that I'm also trying as well to make this as high a probability of success as possible. But there is a chance that we have to make a change. There may be a little bit of rework. Who knows? I don't expect it to happen, but eh, we should just put it out there now. Also, there may be things that I end up making for mine that I don't put up for everybody. So there might be some differences between exactly what I do and what gets put up. The other thing is that I'm trying to give everybody the highest likelihood of success by doing the best that I can with these fixtures. They do really make this process so much easier, but it still does take some patience, you know, some, some effort, some learning to get through it. And I know that not everybody is always capable of that. I myself am not a talented welder. I really am not. I am a novice, but by trying to set myself up as best as possible, I can end up with results that are passable on the internet. So I feel that I can give you guys the best possible chance of that as well. And I'm positive that some of the outcomes of your builds will absolutely end up better than my own. But I also know that there will be some people who may give up. And by saying that, what I'm really trying to say is that just because you quit doesn't mean you get your money back. I'll try and share anything I can, settings, you know, methods, whatever it is. I'm not trying to gatekeep anything that I do with this project, but doesn't always mean that it's going to work 100% on however or whatever you're doing it or wherever you're doing it. Conditions may vary, but I'll do my best to just tell you what has worked best for me. The sale for this project is going to go up at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, that is. 
I'm going to limit the number of people that I'm comfortable with joining and we're gonna stop it at that. Now, if less than the number of people join, we're still gonna cut it off after one week of sales. So from this coming Wednesday till the following Wednesday, that's going to be the total number of people that are allowed to, allowed sounds douchey. So from this coming Wednesday to the following, that's gonna be it, unless it sells out sooner than that, which I'm not really expecting that to happen. The sale of everything will be done through my website, harleydesigns.com, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. That will be live on Wednesday. When you buy in on the website, basically you're just gonna be getting a PDF with some instructions. Again, the distribution of everything will be done through Discord, and that's gonna require me to send you an invite because it's going to be a private area of the server. If you're planning on joining, you can speed things up by creating an account on Discord. There is a public Harley Designs Discord server, and I'll put a link to that below. That'll just help speed things up a little bit so I can invite you into the private section. That's what outlines our project here. I'm excited for this one. I think that this chassis, you know, the first test version of it, which I'm giving this one to Matt because I'm guessing the second one will turn out even better. The fixtures and templates for this project really worked out well. I recently was working on another chassis and I decided to kind of scrap that, make some changes and reboot. And that's when we came up with this one. I've learned a lot from every single time that I've made these fixtures for this type of purpose. And it just gets a little bit better and a little bit easier every time. I'm super confident that many of you will absolutely be able to kill it with this setup. Now, for those of you that aren't interested in building along, but you'd still like to follow along a little bit closer with the progress and the behind the scenes of this stuff. For that side of things, I've set up the channel membership stuff and there's gonna be a ton of like little videos and kind of close up, you know, candid how to stuff with using these things that I plan to put up there. So if you're interested in just following along with the over in depth, you know, fine detail side of exactly what's going on, then you'll find all of that content included with that. I'm excited and nervous for this whole process. The last time I did it with 13 people, it went so, so well. So my expectations are really high and that's what makes me the most nervous about it. I never really covered it on the channel, but we did a progress based on the four dice. And this was a build that was inspired by Mullet, the El Camino from the Cletus McFarland channel. We built a cage on the inside with the like pro mod or funny car style roll cage hoop had containment seats, a full interior, all the bits that went along with that. And it had a full tubed out rear cage as well with this kind of slick style plate type bumper in the back. I had a parachute on there just because. And it had this trick sliding battery tray. This little tray slides on rails into the chassis and there's a hard mounted XT60 up in the front that connects to the ESC and everything that's up front. Super slick, turned out really well, and I totally dug this project. And again, the results from everyone else's was fantastic. Doing a full moon buggy chassis is a little bit more involved than a cage, but I also learned, again, a lot from this one that I applied to this, making this maybe as easy or easier than just this setup but we have to prove that that is going to be the case. I hope that some of you are excited to join along and maybe you'll come compete with us in Colorado with the trucks that we build together. If you're still here, I appreciate it. I am excited. I'm looking forward to it. You will see videos of the build as it goes in a normal, you know, edited project style update. But until then, as always, thanks for watching. Watch the website this Wednesday for the release of the project. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.